a poet, I think it is, who once said, the whole universe is in a glass of wine. I don't know, I don't think we'll ever know in what sense he meant that. <laughs> For the poets don't write to be understood. But it is true that if you look at a glass of wine closely enough, you will see the entire universe. There are the things of physics, the twisting liquid, the reflections in the glass, and our imagination adds the atoms. It evaporates, depending on the wind and weather. The glass is a distillation of the Earth's rocks, and in its composition, as we've seen, the secret of the universe's age and the evolution of the stars. What strange array of chemicals are in the wine? How did they come to be? There are the ferments, the enzymes, the substrates, and the products. And there in wine was found the great generalization. All life is fermentation. Nor can you discover the chemistry of wine without discovering, as did Pasteur, the cause of much disease. How vivid is the claret present pressing its existence into the consciousness that watches it. And if our small minds, for some convenience, divides this glass of wine, this universe, into parts, to physics, biology, geology, astronomy, psychology, and all, remember that nature doesn't know it. So we should put it all back together and not forget at last what it's for. Let us give it, let it give us one final pleasure more. Drink it up and forget about it all. <laughs> the wave seems to move horizontally across the open sea, but the molecules of water actually move up and down vertically. Steve Grant points out that you and I are more like a wave than a permanent thing. He invites us to think of an experience from your childhood, something you remember clearly, something you can see, feel, maybe even smell as if you were really there. After all, you really were there at the time, weren't you? How else would you remember it? But here is the bombshell. You weren't there. Not a single atom that is in your body today was there when that event took place. Matter flows from place to place and momentarily comes together to be you. Whatever you are, therefore, you are not the stuff of which you are made. If that doesn't make the hair stand up on the back of your neck, read it again until it does, because it is important. The fact that we live at the bottom of a deep gravity well on the surface of a gas-covered planet going around a nuclear fireball 90 million miles away and think this to be normal is some indication of how skewed our perspective tends to be. Most educated people, said Sir Martin, are aware that we are the outcome of nearly four billion years of Darwinian selection. But many tend to think that humans are still somehow the culmination of that. Our sun, however, is less than halfway through its lifespan. It will not be humans who watch that sun's demise six billion years from now. Any creatures that then do exist will be as different from us as we are from bacteria or amoeba. So you think of creatures gradually watching the sun die and they're not us. And they're as far from us as bacteria our ancestors are from us. It makes me feel that one uh, mustn't consider evolution uh, as producing us as its last word. That would be a sort of insult to any scientific process. We happen to know that even in the measurable distance of the last few thousand years, that progress is going forward in our brain formation. I think our job is to remain without illusions, integral, intact, keep our planet that way as best we can, and pass it on so that this experiment gets more interesting. <laughs>